day. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Moon Harvest, Amish Earther, Naughty Thumbnails, Mitch Kennedy, Original D Rose, Rod, The Names Burley, Twad Wazzle, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, Flat Earth Travolta, J Miles 24, Unimento, M Iron 26, Endless Flat Earth Sage, Goldie McKinnon, and Retro Bill, More Books, Can of Bear, Fibre Oats, Michael Card, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Melby Styles, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Rob W, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Maria Nealands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, Tina Baker, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's member-only live stream. From this point to this point, right? So as the crow flies from this point to this point, and we see how long it took, then we'll know what speed we were doing. Yo, know, that it was that kind of thing. So, and then when they go out over the oceans, they just try and keep, use. They don't have landmarks, but what they do have is they have a kind of a um, kind of an ad hoc kind of airspeed thing based off of. Uh, well, I won't even call it ad hoc at this stage. It'd be pretty good. Uh, it would be good. Um, based off of doing that over land with known landmarks, you know, that kind of way. Right, but when you get over the oceans and you, like, you have changing um, wind speeds and things like that, like, it, it gets a little bit harder to be known. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and the yeah, oceans in the south would have to be huge. It's bizarre. Like, what if it's real? Like, in the Book of Enoch, it says that the sun goes in and out of portals. And then, Brian, you, you had said earlier that the path of the sun is the 24-hour trigger point. Which, But what if it really is going in and out of portals? How would we map that? Like, what well, we don't need to map the sun, the portals that we mean. don't even know exist? No, what I said earlier was that the only connection the sun has to the latitude and longitude grid is the 24-hour day. Other than that, the latitude and longitude grid has nothing to do with the sun. Technically, it has nothing to do with the sun. So we don't have to worry about what the sun is doing to map out the world, well, I'm, if you understand what I mean. I'm trying to bring the sun back into it. I apologize. I'm just saying that if we were to consider the 24-hour period as the beginning at some point, if there were portals, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to get back into the sun, really, but what if there's portals? Like, how would we account for that? It would be really. But we don't have to account for it. I can't imagine. We don't. We have a twenty. Okay. We have That's a twenty-four true. hour solar day, and we have a solar day that we've broken up into exactly twenty-four hours, and there's fifteen degrees of longitude in each one of those hours. So that's twenty-four hours, three hundred sixty degrees. So that's what. We, so we. That's what we based our day on. After that, we don't have to worry about the sun. I mean, whatever the sun does won't have any bearing on how we map out the world, the, the terrestrial plane. Whatever the sun is doing sure. won't have a bearing on that, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, I was just pointing out that the 24-hour period would be a reset point. And if there's some way that we were created to not really understand it or something, like there was that aspect of reality that we just uh, haven't I, considered. I, I see what you mean. I just don't know, man. Yeah, the 24 hour, yeah, 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 but we, yeah. the reset point, you can't, it's but that reset point, point changes. Yep. Sorry, I, I talked over you. Sorry, I talked over it over you there. Uh, the reset point changes from day to day for everyone. So my solar solar noon today will be different than my solar noon maybe tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? And the same for you because the sun's path is constantly changing. So you won't have an exact point that the sun will keep on resetting at. So it's because it's constantly changing for everybody in every different part of the world then you don't have a reset point, only a local reset point that changes tomorrow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yep, yep, understood. I didn't really mean to bring the sun back into it, but I was 
Yeah. I've, but I don't know. After well, hearing the portals mentioned, I was like, oh, wow. That, what if, you know? Well, the the reset point, like, is the solar point. But for us, time-wise, it's not, not matching. Well, correct local time won't match solar time. There'll be a difference all the time. It's only now and again they will match. But most of the time, they won't match. You know, most days, the solar time and correct local time won't match. Because our correct local time is based off of the latitude and longitude grid, which is the breaking up of the 24 hours. Whereas solar time is going to be uh, a different from that because the, path, the, sun, the sun's path is changing every day. So, so uh, we, we couldn't use the sun because it's not constant daily. It's constant annually on the year, but it's not constant as in it won't reach the same exact place in the sky at the same exact time every day for anyone. It'll be different for everybody because it's, 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 its path is, is changing. It might be raising or lowering and it's getting further or closer to you. You know what I mean? It, so it's changing. It's apparent position, let's just say, is changing constantly. Yeah. Because of its path. Say, say Brian, I was just going to interject, uh, just say a uh, memory. So, like in Little League Baseball in Minnesota, I did, it was a history teacher, but he coached the Little League for baseball. And he'd be able to look at the sun and tell you the time pretty right, like all the time. We, it, we would remark on it. I never figured out, like, I didn't learn it as well as he knows it, but he could, like, make that angle to the sun and be able to tell us the time. But if he tells you with 17 minutes past three in the afternoon, it's going to start raining and it's going to stop at 442, that's exactly what would happen. It's unbelievable. Some people just have an ability. And even though the man you're talking about wasn't a meteorologist, he obviously understood from his own location the sun in a way that most people wouldn't. And he would uh, to give you a, And he was, he was able to match it up for correct local time, was he? Which means he's doing a little conversion even in his head. Well, yeah, yeah he just, was really uh, talented at it. I was impressed. You you work back from zenith, right? You just have to know where the sun comes up in the morning at that time of year and where it goes down at that time of year. And then have a, a fairly good idea of you know, it's just like cutting it in half, right? To what time the sun rises to when it goes down. Cause I, I can, given the time of year, I can get within 30 minutes doing it that way. I ain't like to the minute or nothing, but I get within 30 minutes. Yeah, I would say he was within 15 and usually closer, but yeah, I hear you, John. Yep. Yeah. If you have that ability, like I can kind of probably if I try to pay attention to it, I haven't really paid attention enough to, but I'm in California now and I'm telling you, it's different. It's different. Finally, the sun's up over the horizon fully. Uh, it has been for a little bit, but like Minnesota, the sunrise would be earlier and then setting later, which is not work, doesn't work with the map, I, uh, the globe thing. At least for it's got the sun would have to have some kind of path that relates to the ground, right? Like, like, say we had a path of totality, like when the, when that one, uh, when the, whatever the eclipse is, but this, but the path the moon took across the United States up and down, that's more like what I'm witnessing what the sun is doing in no strange way. If you follow, like, cause it's, it's gotta be accountable to the size of the horizon end to end. Right. And then the path that would have to go apparent path, but it would still be accountable to it making sense, at least with the land that we've been given, right? With long longitude lines as well. It's really bizarre. Like, if you guys remember that that eclipse where the shadow of the moon, like, zigzagged up and down the United States? Like, that's kind of like, what if it's doing what something like that? Turn is the line in this description. Yeah, because California should in no way have less hours of daylight than Minnesota right now. No way. That just don't make sense with the map that I've had laid on a ball in any kind of fashion. Or... Well, we know it's not a ball because we're talking about angles to the sun. So it has to be a flat plane. Um, 
after that. Well, it's measuring. Like, the globe ties at the word angle. It's that simple for sure. It's the best proof in my mind. Also, I it, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I I would contend that the, the um, lights in the sky would be parallel with the water. That's what I believe. I, I think I know it geometrically. It'd have to be that way. I don't know. I don't know if the stars obey our concepts of geometry. Well, what I mean is, if they were lowering toward the horizon for anything other than distance from the observer, then how would we account for the angles measured? I mean, I know it's a, an apparent location, but it is a, you know, a direct line of sight. I consider it, you know, I'm looking at that star. I can point at it, and that's the direction I'm seeing it in or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what I don't. I think I'd agree though, John, with that. But I kind of feel like you wouldn't be able to make angle measurements to something that had, say, no reference except for distance from the viewer. Like there would have to be just that constant, in my opinion. And that would be like flipping the triangle that you make on its hypotenuse, and therefore a flat line on the top parallel with the bottom line and the baseline. Does that make sense? Like geometrically, do you, or Maybe you're right. We can't consider what geometry is really going on with them. I, I, you might be right about that too. But I think it's parallel with the water. I think I'm pretty sure I know it. But it position I mean, I it. is position is with respect to a flat plane, and what position you observe it from. Is it actually there where you saw it? And in, in that. You know, when you try to make a triangle out of it, it doesn't really work because two different viewers will get, you know, two different heights. Well, the height, the Z height isn't, I mean, you could try to trick it out from the 90 and from the angle from the, from the measurement, but you're, you're, it's, I don't think that's a capable, I don't think we're capable of doing that. No, you, I don't think you can't. You can't can use trigonometry on the. You can't use trigonometry yeah, on the I mean. star. Yeah, that's what I so. figured. But yeah, it's a little bizarre. You're right, John. I wouldn't disagree. But I, it's still my favorite proof that the baseline mandates parallel zeniths for six locations when you take three measurements. And if you have diverging planes of reference, which if you're on a sphere, every step would be, you know, every nanometer. You know, it's so dumb. It's it's obvious. It's super obvious um, and easy to understand proof, in my opinion, and being able to measure angles. Indeedy. Have you got a new stream going, Nathan? Yeah, I, I, I did. It, it's so familiar to when I first got the computer in terms of the process that I'm going through. So, um, the GPU isn't quite strong enough. The AV1 encoder crashed when I was running live and a recording at a very high quality. Admittedly, I want more than it can do in that regard. But I thought, well, how can I split this up in some way? And I, th I, I then remembered that I got a, an iGPU inside that I out of commission because it couldn't do both at the same time and i thought well why don't i split the job up i've got two gpus inside the machine why don't i use one of them for live streaming and one of them for recording that way if one of them fails i'll still have the recording or vice versa if the other one fails i'll still have the live stream rather than i rescued the recording i don't know how well it's come out i'll have to find that out after i upload it so the hour and 45 minutes of pre-show 45 minutes of live show and then whatever we got afterwards was only rescued because i quickly acted and saw that this was going wrong and then tried to intervene and lowered the load on the uh, av1 encoder but you think well i'll never have to do that if i don't ask it to do both tasks and just get two different pieces of hardware to do one of each task so that's what i've set up now i've got the only thing is when i when i start it with quicksync the live stream that is it doesn't give me a preview doesn't say yeah you're all connected hunky dory they're like why not and then when you actually press the go live button it does give you a preview 
30 seconds later into the intro, which is a little bit concerning. That's the only thing so far. But didn't I say sod's law? You want to get to the end. I want to get to the end of one week without it failing. Gets to Friday afternoon, right within character, <laughs> fails on its ass. So it's going to rob me of another weekend. The 14 months of pissing around has not ended. Wonderful, eh? Have you ever considered renaming it? If it's not the beast, maybe it won't be so problematic. I called it. It was it just, just the name of the manufacturer the gave it. Beast. Now I call, <laughs> it's called Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe, all right. <laughs> and pet it once in a while. What about fans? Are you using any fans? Anything? Yeah, six of them. Maybe you're having heat. Yeah, yeah, six of them. They're all running. Okay, all right. No, that is not a problem. Heat isn't the problem anymore. Everything's running nice and cool. I think it's just. A throwback from when I first got the computer, the, the graphics card did, wasn't a particularly good encoder because it was overheating, <laughs> so I didn't want to use that. So I tried to use the uh, onboard CPUs graphics card, whatever you want to call that, integrated CPUs graphics processor, but it couldn't live stream and record. That was my problem. Every time I tried to get it to do both, it fell over, which was a pain in the ass. Well, now I don't need it to do both. I can get the graphics card to just do the recording and get the CPU's graphics processor to just do live streaming. Um, and then it's only at, at the moment, it's running at 57% capacity, which is probably why it used to fall over. In other words, it's just over 50% to just live stream. In other words, if you want it to live stream and record, it's more than 100%. Therefore, it would fall over. But doing 50, what's it at now? 47, 50, 51% of its overall capabilities, just live streaming. I think that should be a good time for everybody, hopefully. Yeah, I, mean, I hope so too. Sorry, it's been such a mess for Unless you. Unless it fails. Hey, I'm just curious. <laughs> In which case yeah. it won't be. Hey, I'm just curious how you would feel about trying to learn that 3D modeling software. I don't think it'd be a whole lot, and it would probably give you a lot of good visual aids. What do you think of that, Nathan? Uh, I can get you a source for free software oh, um, if you want. Out. It's Huh? Which is not my skill set. Sorry. Okay, I just, yeah, like, I just, it would take a little bit of time to learn. It would. I'm not saying it wouldn't. But yeah, I, I do use 3D software, but I just don't have a computer. Wonderful. There is glory to be had in it. You can just point out there is glory to be had in it, and if Brian has a rough idea on how to make it, um. Not that we need it at this point, you know. Um, no, no, we don't. Any new person that, or anybody like on the fence about, you know, the geometry maybe would like benefit by, say, a blackboard per se. Um, and especially if you turn it into a sphere and start turning it around and putting things on it and then pointing out you have this, you know, a compound angle at every point, you know, on this measurement. There's no way it can be resolved. It's, it's, geometrically just totally but it would be easy for some people a visual aid for like people's wives or whatever you know fans wives or whoever man some people really benefit by seeing a thing rather than having it explained you know what i mean and it's not that there aren't a few memes that are on the screen but i think a lot could be added to um how you just it, i would really like to actually make it and just send it to you guys i should try and find a computer that i can use or something anyway yeah i think I, I oh it would be helpful and we don't need it us you know it, the only thought is is for somebody that a visual aid would really you know somebody who maybe isn't you know that quick or whatever maybe i don't really know people learn different some people learn better by hearing about it some people learn better by you know doing it with doing a thing with supervision or with visual aids or you know, these sort of things. Like when you're trying to train people for safe, safety for working for a company, they're going to present you with a TV and a video and have you go through whatever points they want you to know and then test you on what it had to say. Sometimes some visual things like with math, maybe. Because anybody arguing about a flat baseline and, and angle measurements, I definitely, if they're arguing against that, there's something wrong with them. It's going to take just like you guys were saying about me. McToon earlier. Go ahead. It's going to take them a year to get this argument. I mean, it just does. It takes people a while to cotton on. 
We have to say it hundreds of times before people start repeating it. How long has the Black Swan been out? Three years? People are just starting to really get their teeth into it and use it, and you hear people independently of us using it uh, to great effect. Well, Jared, yeah. for an example, right? He rattled it off to Brenda and put her in a place quite sharp, didn't he? Almost four years already, Nathan. Right. It's nuts, isn't it? I want to say, I remember that video before I ran it. Like, Nathan, I'm kind of new to you, which I had been looking for a show like yours. I was kind of stuck in the feast of nonsense with, like, some other people, like Founded Earth Brothers. And Flatsoid was around, um, in my view, and then Taboo Conspiracy. But really running into you has been massively helpful. I wish I could do more to financially support you, and I will when I can. But thanks, man. Oh, man, the amount of support I get is It was wonderful. the Eddie Bravo comment. That I'm got very me pleased here. with the amount of support I get from people. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not a rich man, but the fact that. You know, my, I got, I got it today, actually. I got a ping from my bank saying I'm overdrawn. Well, Oof, the fact that that I didn't know. happen three weeks ago, two weeks ago, when I was replacing hard drives, replacing graphics cards, you know, that's f fantastic, as strange as it may sound. Yeah, I'm broke, but I'm not massively into the debt that I thought I'd be in replacing those bits and bobs because I thought people would have no sympathy because I've been doing it moaning about right, computers. Sounds that I don't. But I did. I got I'm it just consistent. stuck without a job. I'm very pleased. Yep. Yeah. It, the, I, yeah. I, so thanks to everybody who helps keep you going. Thank you, everybody listening later. Thank you, guys, everyone. But yeah, thanks, Nathan. Um, you helped me learn how to know things in a huge way. More than this platform here in QE have given me the ability to how to know a thing and how to, how to pull apart fallacies. Um, it's been really great for me. Good. Thanks. It's worth the effort. I mean, I have at the moment, for the last 14 months at least, poured every waking moment into the show because, you know, keeping the computer running is the show because it's what produces it. So it, I've poured my heart and soul into it. And I've, I've now at the point where I'm like, no, I'm sick of making sure that the technicalities of the show are, are fine. I want that to end because I want to put, like today, I really did feel like I was going to have a good show and all those sorts of sentiments. And then 45 minutes into the live show, the encoder fails. It didn't crash. No, I didn't get a black screen. But you're like, right, okay, so I've got to spend the entire weekend testing again. <laughs> it's never ending. So I'll be miserable on Monday, if you wonder why. And I was due to go out for a curry as well. That's another annoying thing. So my tech guy and I had arranged to go out for a curry this evening. And, um, well, I haven't said this to him, but mainly because I'm broke. But moreover, the fact that I've got to now spend the time testing the computer. He's always said to me, because I'm often broke, like, I will cover your curry. And he has, in the past, covered a couple of curries that I've just not been able to afford. Very nice of him. But you feel cheap doing things like that, and I don't want to do it too often, as much as I do when I go out for, him for a curry. He's just done a load of work on the computer. But by the same token, it failed during a live stream, so I've got to prioritise. I know he's helping me to get that this computer to the position where it can constantly live stream for an hour and not fail. Um... But I've got to prioritise actually testing it over going out for a, what is effectively a curry with a mate, which I can't afford, um, which is annoying. Had it not failed, I would have bled that free curry off him. Free curry? Well, what that I mean by free curry... like a previous lifetime. No, no, what I mean by free curry is when, whenever I say, no, I won't come out for a curry, oh, why not? Well, because I'm poor as all hell. Like you are, Win, right? You know, you know how you've been for the last two weeks. I only reached that point today. <laughs> Got no money anymore. You know when the last right? time is I actually ate out? I, I Six years ago. Yes, that was the same for me, up until the point that Craig started buying me curry. Right? Do you understand? Now the digger, right. there has I been. I didn't a... have anybody buy me curry, so. Yeah. Well. Okay. Fine. Sorry. I happen to but walk into I, a computer I shop. Mean, I mean, I am very, very thankful for all the supporters and all their patience with me. Me just cranky getting collapsed and then getting back up again when suddenly I get the support in and that just like like an engine. I kind of feel like an engine, you know, just going back and forth. But I'm still going. I'm still running, right? I'm. It's, it's not rusting. This engine isn't rusting. I mean, 
can run out of gas at any second every time, but it, it won't rust. I don't know. Sometimes I do feel like God is watching over us, are we? I'm not a very religious person, and I don't I often do. mention it, but there are often points. Normally when I'm pretty close to despair, <laughs> I'm like, there's got to be someone looking out for me for this to have happened, whatever it may be that day. You're like, no, I'm not going to set the world on fire. No, I'm not going to buy a mansion. But I'm, I feel like I'm looked after. I really do. Now, that is no, in reality too. not God. It's it's the people of the community like Lumpy, right? But, you know, you know I'm getting at. Who's to say that isn't God? I mean, I feel you God, pretty Lumpy? bad desperation about twice a week. It is not an exaggeration. Well, yeah. I just, I just feel like, no, I'll just I think, oh, no, we're going to hear from Lumpy, are we? Okay, then not. I am God. I, just, I feel this way, is that God can work on people's hearts, and that, like, I'll say this, from my experience in life, regardless of earnings at the time, I've never gone hungry for a day if I wanted to eat, my whole life. You know, and if that isn't God, I don't know how to explain God, because I couldn't have made plans for the day as to how that was going to happen like a previous week from that time and i haven't gotten hungry if i wanted to eat my, a whole day in my life and i haven't worked a lot like and kind of struggled with life whatever in general but whatever I, that's how i see god like in a way there's a lot of ways but that's one way and i agree with you nathan yeah like he, he can work on a person's heart that you're not even aware of you know at all like and then and then bam you have something to eat a little bit of money, something to eat, no way to take care of yourself. Is that because that's kind of how I view um, God showing up? It, it's in the reality of life in the moment, you know, it, how things well, come it, to pass that you wouldn't plan in such a way. It's God in humans, right? When we pray to God, we pray to the God that is in humans, right? To in, in that same frequency, it does work as long as you just don't take it for granted, don't crap on God. If you're like going to talk shit about God all day long. You're not going to get this kind of support. Not this kind. You will get another type of support that doesn't really make you happy. Make, make you, it, it will give you abilities to brag to other people about how well you're doing. It's not going to make you happy. Well, doing this the way that I've been doing it, just with the pure honesty, with the, my own way, my own religious decisions and insights, like very strictly my own way, and with that pure honesty, it's great. And God does actually reach out. I do pray to God directly, even when I'm desperate. I don't always do it. It's not like, oh, this is my business. I just pray to God and he take care of me. No, no, no. When it's genuinely desperate, I genuinely pray, pray. And then really something out of nowhere happens that I didn't see coming. And that's what I feel is God. Like when I can't see it coming. Unexpected help okay. because you can calculate you can even statistically size up what will be coming around right you can't but when it's completely unexpected that's like yeah it feels like that's god it's like something that you never knew was there and it turned out to be there specifically for you in that moment those are very special yeah. experiences yeah let's change the subject to something else Quickly get away from the Arwadian religion. Just something else. This. Right. Well, thankfulness to God is can save your life because if you're not thankful, well, the other option is you can be just envious and cranky. I love it. And, and being envious and cranky eats you up on the inside. It literally costs more resources for your body to endure that state. I love how well, me and Arwin, Arwin and I, chatting about God literally makes people uncomfortable. I love it. Good. So let's do it some more, right? We're not here to provide oh, people with, with, with their comfort zone. We're here to break that comfort zone. So that you can pay you. If I can interject on, God, on the God thing, and, and I'm sorry, I got frustrated frustrated with you and you can tell me whatever you care to say and I, you can be even frustrated i don't mind but i really believe jesus decided at the time that we sinned that he would sacrifice himself because god has to be the image of justice for the purpose of forgiving us he has to be he's the only one that has the authority and i believe he fulfilled the prophecies and that was 
why he told the prophecy so that we would know who he was. So anyway, that's just, don't get mad, please, if you can help it. I'm not trying okay. to be a jerk on any level. I, but the hell testimonies I've been hearing, seem, some of them seem honest and they seem really bad. Like, like this is grace of God time right now and, and a time to connect with him. That, that, a separation uh, a from God for you. won't allow a voice to him. So I'm just saying that. But you can do it however you want in life. It's a concern because I think you're good. I think I think you're saved. That's what I think, Arlen. You're going to be a, a saved individual at some oh, point. I have a question Jesus. for That's you. Thank you very much for sure, the praise. Sure. Right. So yeah. how does one just... injustice negate all injustices? Unless you claim that oh, Jesus well, getting crucified I mean, was just... Hey, hey bro. Now, you know, this sort of thing is almost supernatural. You talking like over each other. Nobody can hear anything that's being said because you're just talking straight through each other. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to answer the question. He he asked that question. And I'm going to say my, my ability to conceive of it accurately because I have sin in my life and because I'm I'm not God is is on a level I can't really give an answer to that. I'm just saying that like it, 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 I see it as the need for justice like the world has a lot of suffering you know and and everything's going to die it's like even if you're a vegetarian what are you going to save the cows forever no heck that being that mean in a farm is their best life right but anyway okay. um uh okay so justice okay, that's so what is. about sorry what about the crucifixion has any kind of meaning that would carry justice um, Let's get the punishment here. for sin, on a, on a, on a, on a, ma making Satan a, a murderer at that point as well, because Jesus didn't have sin, and he needed to be a perfect the sacrifice. Question. Needed, this is a lot of side talk. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I'm just trying to help you, Arwen. I, I don't need help. I want an love. answer to the question. Sure. Yes. Go ahead. That's what I mean. It had okay. The representation we were given in the Old Testament about how things needed to be perfect. It was that, Arwen. It it. However, I don't abide by everything. Stop you for a second. I really am sorry. We are live to members now. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I still oh. treat this like flat Earth debate when live. So as much as I've tolerated you two, don't get that phraseology okay. wrong. Can we change the subject? John tried. Now I'm trying. Why? Because it's not yes, flat. Yeah, I finally want to talk. No, because it's, it's flat not Earth the way. Right. We are live, right. and we're not talking about flat Earth. We're talking about Christianity, specifically about the crucifixion. Oh, so I can talk about it anytime. Anytime you ever want. As long as it's three in the morning. Can we please talk about something else? Let me give something to talk about, right? I'm going to say something, and it might be unpopular, but I'm just speaking the truth from what I see. The black swan. We all understand why when the opposition say refraction, it kills them, right? But unfortunately, when QE first brought that out, the problem with it is, is it's too clever, right? Now, it's simplistic if you understand it. But what's happening is most of the flat earthers out there were duped into hearing that the answer to it was refraction. And they end up having a refraction argument with the ballers, not understanding that what the ballers is claiming is, are claiming is not refraction. And they're getting baited and switched, right? So when you, Nathan, say when, to QE, but we have much clearer photographs, right? where we don't have this uh, bendy cranes, right? And QE say, he did say refraction, and QE says, I want them to say refraction, right? That is the killing of them. But it's actually so clever, right, that most people miss the point. And mm -hmm. because most people are missing the point, a lot of people are missing the point. I agree. And they've been missing the point for four years. I agree. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Agree. Right. That's not the logical, right. though. I mean, it is literally the flipping inside out of reality when you do that refraction and everything that it implies, right? So, of course, people yeah. out there are not going to be able to follow it. Not everybody. 
Well, it's simple, though, because if your line of sight to the horizon is a tangent, that is how you calculate the sphere. You say refraction, you don't have a tangent anymore. You what have a mathematical tangent, just not optical. Yeah, you don't so I have any that, tangent. Yeah, there is no optical or mathematical. You, by saying refraction, you are throwing tangency out the window. Why can't people understand that? I know it's like it's stupid from their op opposition side, but then on our own side, we have naive people who just go, oh, well, refraction explains it. And that's the end of that. So consequently, the, the, it becomes uh, uh, on, the, on the opposite side, they don't realize, well, you can't have a tangent to a refracted position. And on our own side, then we don't realize, people don't realize that what they're claiming not, not only is not refraction, but it, it destroys their model to claim it. It's, so, it's actually yeah. that little complication ha ha has convoluted it. Yeah. I, I mean, how many, times, with an idea? how many times when you're dealing with them on an angle, uh, how do you get an angle from a curved baseline and they want to invoke a tangent <laughs> to a sphere to get an angle to a sphere, right? Like, they can't even do that anymore when they start talking about, oh, well, if you take your eye level and draw a line, a line of sight from your eye to the horizon, the, the, what about a tangent? You know, but, yeah, you got rid of that. That doesn't exist. You you threw it out the window with the black swan. Hey, I was going to uh, interject on an idea because uh, we can see the oil platforms and the horizon behind it due to the angular size change based on the aperture, correct? Like, and get it into focus, what we see with the black swan. Say, for example, if you uh, compare it to not being able to see a human blood cell unless you change the angular size to the viewer, and that there's space actually compressing in the field of view as you look further into the distance and validate that with, say, tail lights or something and how they appear closer horizontally. But we don't need and, to do any of that. None of that is necessary. Oh, I know. That's the but, whole point. But just for people that are struggling, we don't need it. No, I'm just saying to try to think but, outside the box for somebody that might. But they're only struggling because they don't understand the opposition's. Yeah. Sorry, don't be. That's what I mean. they don't, they're only struggling because they don't understand the opposition's argument against it. Because the opposition don't understand their own argument against it. Oh, the if opposition is just going to be an opposition like John just always. Finished, John Nothing just makes sense there. to them. Yeah, yeah by on, let me finish. John just pointed out there the problem. You can't have a tangent to a refracted horizon. That's the end of that. There is no ge globe geometry in the story, right? But the flat earthers, when the ballers say it's refraction, a lot of flat earthers then want to argue with them about refraction as opposed to what they're claiming, which is not refraction. They call it refraction, but it isn't refraction. It's mathematical. It's a mathematical way of them being able to describe how a horizon could be in a place it can't be within them on their model. But the problem is the, that whole part of that argument, even though it's the, even though it's the absolute killer of the, it's the absolute killer of the ball, the whole, that whole part convoluted the whole thing so much that it's too clever for most people to understand it. Basically it is, most people don't understand it. They literally get it wrong. Most people get it wrong. It's sad to say, but it's true. And that's why four years later, we have so many people not understanding that basic I, it, premise. You, you know, this might be a good, uh, uh, so kind of to go with the Rayleigh criterion, but you could take a small object, say, and be able to see it like in your eyes, like a hair. But if I go even 20 yards back, that hair will converge in space because it won't, you won't be able to see it. But what has that got to do with the horizon? And that, and the black, what has that got to do no, with that? It is. What, that's what, oh, it, it has everything to do with it. That's the, the, say, the vanishing point or or how we are limited to an angular size change due to distance but that over. But that doesn't change but where the horizon is going to be. But if you compare that to, say, the Nikon P900, oh, no. it's, uh, well, not, where the, no, Brian, the horizon just, just is going to be whatever uh, uh, distance stop a second, guys. Stop, stop. 
going to have to let him get to the end. Otherwise, 90% of what he's saying to you can't be understood, Brian. So what I mean is, okay. if you take just like a small thing and go back, it will converge sooner because it has less size to give you in the beginning. Just like a human cell. You can't see it with your naked eye because of the angular size. So that converging is happening horizontally and vertically. And that has everything to do with where the horizon appears to be to a viewer with limited abilities. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're limited. And our eye has been hijacked and made to believe that that's the curve. But it's really, we can demonstrate better. I think we can do some better jobs of demonstrating for visual learners, maybe. And I, it's not, we're not here to tell each other, you know, that we know that the earth is flat. We're trying to come up with ways to teach, in my opinion. I, I think. And that would draw more people. I think. Well, hold on. That's what I think. But Brian's point, though, is why are you explaining the debunking of their claim? Why are you trying to explain something oh, else? No, no, no. They're, they're, they're dumb. They're, the anti flat earthers have no point. They make stuff up and then responding to it is well, we're finally coming around to not even to pointing out where their their response is self defeating and they still don't get it so they're never going to get anything. I'm just trying to their their job is to be anti, you know anything anything we come to learn. That's what their job is. I don't know about the you know really a perspective dealing with you know people that make stuff up. I don't even know why entertain it because it is dead at the first it. When you like the Arwinian paradox, it really helped me be able to wrap my head around why that's why that is a self defeating argument. But leaving it there and not even bringing it up because it's not even real, you know, I, that's my opinion. Yeah, but that's you're making a kind of a separate point to what to with the point I brought up to Olympi because I'm talking about oh. why flat earthers are not getting it. Oh, I can't well, know I'm, why I'm, people I'm don't Flat earthers. I'm talking about why their flat earthers aren't getting it. It's because they're, well, my, they're being old way. I think there's liars I, I in the it, people promoting themselves as a flat earther who are not because they're they're trying to make flat earthers uh, dumb so they do no, dumb stuff it's, along it's the way. It's not always that. That's what I it's think. Not always that. No, there's a lot of flat earthers out there who actually think that refraction explains it because they don't understand the argument. The refraction and the things within the argument, they don't understand it. They don't understand that there has nothing to do with refraction. See, this, it's that, see, this is the thing. It's that little nuance they don't get. A lot of people just don't get it. Not everyone, obviously. There's obviously people who do get it, but they're in the minority. And that's why it's taken four years and people are still not... There's people out there on the flat outside who, who are still arguing with Globers about refraction when it comes to the back swan. When it has nothing to do with refraction, but the Globers are, are calling refraction. Not only does... Does their claim destroy their own geometry? But they're not even claiming refraction. They're claiming something that's based on their geometry that they can't measure because they've just thrown it away. It's because they're, they're showing that they're, the black swan proves it's not there. And they, they admit it's not there. So consequently, it's all a big jumble. But the point is, is that the, the whole thing would have been easier to understand if, I, I think, if there was a clearer photograph used as the example. And those the photographs were there. But QE chose this one, and the problem is that the argument is too clever. Well, it's too cut and dry. It's is too it, clever. Brian, and people aren't getting it. Brian, the, Brian, the BMLB video is still up. You can clip it whenever you want, or just take a screenshot. And yeah, that should yeah, still be there. Yeah, but it's too late now, Lumpy. Yeah, but it's too late. It's four years well, later. Well, it's kind of too late now, maybe, because, yeah. You, but if you can validate that it will clear up, um, that it would be, it would be maybe worth... I don't know. Why would we I can appeal give to people that photographs. I would, can take would photograph myself claim of nonsense? The horizon. Says, okay. Yeah, but it's too late now. It's I, too I late now. It's four years later. That's the point. It's almost four years later. Happening. I know. I hear you, bud. It's difficult. People, my sister doesn't even understand a triangle at this point. I've really given up. <laughs> so I hear you. <laughs> QB's argument, Black Swan argument, is epic. It's perfect. It's so perfect, though, people don't get it. Because it has nuances in there that you'd have to understand certain things to understand those little nuances. 
And unfortunately, we have a huge amount you know, of people out there who don't understand them. Um, I think what happens is in the in the middle of hearing it, they all of a sudden start, you know, implanting their own idea of what the sphere would be and the fact that they think that they've seen pictures of it from space. And I think it just gets all muddied up in their head or something. I don't think they can listen to full statements or something. I don't know what the problem well, is. But, re but refraction said isn't, isn't even the thing at all. It's just made up stuff and appealing to it. It's sad that anybody doesn't get it. I, I don't know how to help people understand. I can explain something 10 times, 100 times, and if they don't understand it, I don't know what to do about that. You know, but di different te methods of teaching, people learn better with different types. But our problem here in the United States, generally speaking, now, now Nathan has spoken on being given a logic-based education. We have comprehension. They tell us what to think. Um, there is no introduction of any basic logic class until you go to like a four-year school probably here in the United States. So we, we're kind of hampered in the, in the respect that we learn a different way and we just aren't um, uh, offered these tools at all. And some people can incorporate them without some instruction or something probably, like to be able to make use of it. That's what I suspect. But then again, what do I know about what somebody else is thinking? I, I can't do I can't do it. Anyway, thanks, Brian. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Thanks, Lumpy. Thanks, nice, Lumpy. But yeah, the the way the our educational system works over here is you have different levels within each grade, right? You have your grades, but then the, like, what's the point of teaching everyone logic and reason when all you some people are ever going to have to do is push a button? Yeah, they're going to be in a factory. As a machinist, as a machinist, I have to be able, to, like, if I'm making a model, for example, there's a lot of things I got to go through that would be basically logical, as far as where I want to start my planar references and stuff. Also, the simplified build, and um, I show examples, but it might take a while. But there's some things that just pushing buttons are uh, incorporate. You know the use of logic for sure because I'm a machinist. I basically push buttons for a living, but it's still challenging for sure. Making parts that accurate is challenging, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, but why are we but, talking about the American education system now? Oh, because we, we were we, talking because about having Black some Trump. introduction to logic because people learn how to understand a thing when it's based in not being able to know, the, which is what the globe totally promotes, accepting just those stories. So when uh, an idea is presented to some people in, an, in with, using logic, but they have no access to why that works that way, maybe without some like time spent, you know, more time than it might come natural to us, but they might not be able to do that like we can immediately and naturally, because the whole way they were always taught was a, another way of understanding a thing. So it, I'm, I'm not saying I know what they're going through. I just say. It seems like they can't access logic because I do this a lot in public face to face is about flat earth. And I tell you what, when they're arguing it, art triangles and stuff, where, where do you go from there? Yeah, but you Lumpy, know? you're moving away. You keep moving away from the point we were I was trying to focus on. Oh, yeah. The point I'm trying to focus on is that the black swan is a little bit too clever for most people. That's why we'd have been better off with a photograph. Of some with an horizon behind something, but that something doesn't have bendy cranes for the globers to jump on as a lifeline. Right? And for the uneducated globers oh. and the uneducated flat earthers, then to. Brian, if that's the case, then so. why don't you just point out the closer oil rig, which is still a black swan that doesn't have bendy cranes? Because when the. Yeah, but, the problem, yeah, but you're the missing camera, the point, Lumpy. The, the point is beyond beyond at the time, six miles. Yeah, well done, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Go why, ahead, why not use the closer oil rig? Because there is no bendy cranes, and it's still a black swan. Seriously, it is. It really is. 
like the horizon at one foot observer yeah. height needs to be 1.2 miles. That's obviously, you know, further than that, six miles or whatever. It's it's a black swan too. So the bendy cranes yeah. are just a distraction, and in every respect, for sure, because you have two black swans in that image for sure. Well, this goes back to what yeah. me and Nathan was talking about in the pre-show about we're arguing with people that don't understand their own claims, right? They, they're just repeating things and knee-jerk reactions to things. Like, maybe uh, if Flat Earth is going to grow, it has to be in fields of study that actually understand the claim. Like, instead of dealing with the zombies, we need to be dealing with the priesthood. Exactly. There's, what's wrong is that we're I've dealing with ballers who don't understand their on. own claims. One second. We're dealing with ballers who don't understand their own model and their own claims. They're willing to say anything at the drop of a hat just to get themselves out of a hole. And then we're dealing with flat earthers who don't understand their claims or our, or our own claims sometimes. You know what I mean? They don't understand. We have flat earthers who listen too much to these people and end up in our refraction arguments about the black swan, not understanding that even a mention of refraction, but not only are they what the baller is claiming, not, well, not only is that not even refraction, but the fact that they're even claiming refraction ends their model because, John, as you said, you can't have a tangent to a refracted horizon is over. But the, so the point is they took all the geometry away and the flat earthers don't understand it. But the reason all this is happening is because the argument was too clever. The argument was for people who were able to get it, which is unfortunately in the minority. Most people aren't getting that. If the argument was made, if it was, if a different photograph was cho chosen and the whole thing was more simpler, I, over time, I, 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 I'm not just laying it out the door of the black swan and QB, I say the same about celestial navigation. That was made more complicated than it needed to be, and that's why the argument continues and goes on. The simplistic sort of thing of, of celestial navigation is the elevation angle, but it's specifically the dip correction, which gives you that, that 90 degrees. After that, you wouldn't need anything else. We can bring it in later on, but that should have been the focus. But straight away, it was brought to bubble sextants and, this, and artificial horizons, and this, that, and the other thing. And it all got so complicated, now it's a big complicated mess. It wasn't kept simple enough. And simplicity is the key. Yeah, the the globe does thrive on ignorance. That's that's a fact. Complicated ignorance John, would be a good way of it. Thrive. It thrives on imagination. No, no. It doesn't thrive on ignorance. Like without ignorance, it it can't work at all. It's desperately in need of ignorance. It doesn't thrive on it. It doesn't thrive really. It's just like how long can you cover up the truth? How long can you keep it ignorant so that they could just play around with their presuppositions? Well, I was talking about the belief in it thrives on ignorance. Well, yeah, yeah thrive don't, don't are, it's the system. essential ingredient. Thrive is like growing. I mean, it doesn't really grow from ignorance that much. Yeah, it grew from ignorance. It absolutely did. That's how we got it. Well, that no, it's the essential ingredient. It's not like, oh, well, you add a bit of ignorance here and then, oh, it grows super hard and the other region, it doesn't. No, it was everywhere. That's what allowed it to become such a world belief. If there wasn't any, it couldn't have existed at all. It didn't really thrive. It can't survive without it, is my point. Right? There's a statement I used to put in chat sometimes. I can yep. explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. I want that as a t-shirt, I think. But yeah, I don't know why people don't get it. It don't make sense. I can't really be in their frame of reference because it's it's well done to me on so many levels. But yeah, I don't know. I can't figure out why people don't get it, except for the line. Like Mattoon, I really think he's a liar. I really do at this point, but people like that. Oh, well, Maxine is a lawyer, but he's just a little bit more clever than the average bowler. Right? He's still he's a lawyer though, but he's not that. But he's a bit more clever than the average bowler, but yet he still makes massive mistakes himself. But because he's a bit smarter than the rest of them, 
to go along with him, if you understand what I mean. I'm not saying he's a smart well, guy or super no, intelligent, but I'm just saying he's that he's smart enough, to, he's smart enough to, to fool them. He's not even that super smart. He is relative. He's okay. But he's especially like socially, he's just very dynamic. He's much more naturally likable, I think. Mm, I understand the angle you're taking on it, a kind of a, a dynamic, a social dynamic angle. But right, it just makes him more but, functional at it. Well, him, himself, him himself, I would say, is just like, like real if a bit smarter than the average bowler. But that doesn't make them geniuses. You understand what I mean? Yeah, but Ruve is a whole different case because Ruve doesn't have that likability, the social dynamic. He's just really on that sharp edge of anti-flat earthism and he's like really full of himself. It's very different. Like Ruve couldn't get that kind of credit. He does, but who cares? That's not the point. He does? The point is that, is that they're smart enough to create an argument that the rest of the bozos will go along with, even if the argument from our standpoint is nonsense. It's still good enough, like with Rumpus. Rumpus came up with the refraction for the black swan, right? And they all went along with it, all of them. Now, that is their model anyway, as it turns out, that was their model all along. That was their model all along. But the point is, is that it's a rubbish argument. It, 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 dest it destroys them. But yeah, but the you get nothing, you know? And that, that's the, it's not like, oh, well, that's a good solution. No, it's they were all like, we need to go somewhere. It doesn't have to actually work as long as it seems to work at the time being. That's how they always do things, because they can't find solutions to our rebuttals. They can only find distractions that work well enough on them to keep them preoccupied with their newly tapped ignorance to let our arguments that completely destroy everything just slip by. That's how they do it. They're all very desperate in the moment. Right? Somebody else could have said something else that wasn't refraction and equally pointless. If it would have like preoccupied them sufficiently, they would have gone with that. Well, chocolate nails it when he says, "Quick, say something," because that's what they do. Yeah, Quick, exactly. say something. Exactly. That's what they do. They need to say something. They just say something, and then they all get behind that something that was said. So it's a united front behind an argument that's a heap of rubbish. That destroy like it's a united front with the black swan when they claim refraction. It's an they have this united front behind an argument that destroys their own model. But they just collectively, collectively ignore or deny that. You know what I mean? So, as John said earlier, and I've been on this train for a long time now, you're wasting your time dealing with these people. You need to be dealing with the high priesthood, Let me not people who don't even understand their own claims. Let me do a QE on that. What model? They don't even have a model. They never yeah, have a model. Go, they just be think on they that do. And it's all just a confidence game on how can we postpone and uh, basically prevent our group from catching on that the whole thing is thing is bunk, right? They don't have a model. Never did. There you go. The globe confidence game. You nailed it. That's what it is. The globe is a confidence game. Yeah, it's a storytelling pyramid scheme confidence game. <laughs> that is so correct. A storytelling pyramid scheme confidence game. That nails the globe. <laughs> Makes a good title, too. I think I'll use that for tomorrow's early bird show. You know, it, it's really fanciful to the globe in, in, in respect, like if you were to play people's arguments about, say, from the globe side in regard to, say, Coriolis, and just play it back to them and ask them to explain what they meant, 
like because you you hear like the ramblings of just imagination going on often with some trigger keywords you know involved and it's it's bizarre because it's like they do the wiki thing and they say that they need to insert word here or there but it doesn't comport to what the claim is even so it's always whimsical ramblings that's why you get a like a hundred different definitions for say ether or whatever it's the same whimsical rambling that the globe is in my the way i see it now it, it, you guys concur with that it's, it's what i hear the anti-flat earthers they're not already scripted ones but say if some of their audience or something that they come to debate somebody they just seem to whimsically ramble about any claim or reality they have it's like fanciful sort of just convoluted unable to pull even recognize their own contradictions and stuff it's it's it, it's like storytelling, like Arwen was just saying. It's bizarre. You're going to need a flat plane for that globe that you're trying to describe. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, guys, by the way, for these types of conversations. They always bring out the verbal creativity in me. I like it. Yeah, but we continue to talk about the, a non-existent globe, a non-existent model, like you just said, and everything else that comes attached with it. Right. Globe Earth, the storytelling confidence-based pyramid scheme. It's a nice title. Yeah. Talk about a, a lot second. of them. Can we talk about a pyramid? Let me say this. They've been around a while. Pyramids. It's a structure. A man built structure. Now, before anything ever happened, man understood aspect of the earth. Those things are well, let me let me let me reverse engineer this. I go to the Great Pyramid today. I climb the outside step by step. I get to the middle of the structure on the outside. I pull out a weighted line, a weighted line, AKA plumb bob. Between two blocks vertically of that pyramid, what are the odds? Now understand the tolerance of the Great Pyramid between these two blocks. There's no tolerance to speak of. You can't really put a human hair in between the block. That's how structurally sound and plumb this, this is. So what are the odds that I take a plumb bob, a weighted line, and I hang it in between at the crease of two of those blocks vertically? Okay. What are the odds that it's going to match, line up exactly? Okay. But it will be Hold on. Okay. This this should be fundamental, like a a, a cornerstone, a, the first step into all the all the other aspects of the of the earth. Because there's fundamentals known. One, vertical. I guarantee you that plumb bob's gonna line up at every crease on those vertical blocks. Exactly. Exactly. That structure is plumb. Now, another thing, man, no, horizontal. Every time, 100% absolute. If I if I took a glass of water with me and I let it rest 
and I put it to the horizontal creases of those blocks on the pyramid, will it match or will one be cockeyed one to another? I guarantee you it will match. I guarantee base, you every plumb line, yeah. and every horizontal will line up at perpendicular on that pyramid and any structure man has ever built, ever. These things must be known as absolutes. There is an absolute vertical, zero, absolute horizontal. To get this, we must submit to what the earth tells us it is, lest we are, right? An ab abominant to that. If we want to build against plumbob or against a water level, you can. You can. That's forcing something. But good well, not really, no, no, no. Not with something well, of just that size. I'm saying now there's the third we'll thing that the earth them. has. The earth also has a magnetic needle that will always point north. What we have in the in what the Earth is telling us is that there's a, a north, right? There, there's a vertical and that there's a horizontal every time 100 percent. Everything we do is based off those those three things. North, vertical, horizontal. Whether it comes to navigation, building, mapping, anything. Those are the three things known. Those are the orienters. That pole is the center. That pole star is its bride. That, uh, everything around that is the wheel. Everything. There's only north, only north. There's true, absolute vertical, true, absolute horizontal. All plumb bobs, no matter how long the line is, are going to be parallel to another at all times, never diverging. The earth is telling you something. It's nature. Over all distances, all heights, hang as many as you want. One to another in relation, they're all parallel every time at rest. This is known. Same with all glasses of water. Hang a million of them. You let them rest, all heights and all distances. Okay, different heights, different distances. It's all parallel. The Earth's telling you something. There's a north. That's it. Everything that's not north is south. Everything that's not plumb is not plumb. Everything that's not vert horizontal is not horizontal. They're orienters. You you're either submit to it and you're in line with it, or you're aberrant to it. Okay? It's the submission to it. It's the submission to it. It's telling you what the, the shape is. If we want to go no. off from there, you talk about like rockets have to do this and that. I mean, no, it's no not, even it's talk not about telling you that. No, it's it's telling us, telling it's giving that. us a direction. It's not telling us the full shape, right? There's still like distinct issues. Like we know magnetic north is like a point. It's a point somewhere on the map. But celestial north is not... It's really Look complicated, more. but you can't Look. prove it's a Look. point. You Look can't further prove it. into what you're saying, Orwin. Look further. I is like that there, with that elbow. It, is because there really all these things? Is there a South Pole? They tell you there is. Where do, what does your needle say? What's your needle well, that's say? That's the magnetic South Pole, and there are two of them, actually. Right? Two magnetic well, that's South Poles. Yeah, but the point is, we don't know if so south you're telling me, around Arwen, us or if it is literally a direction that is absolute. Arwen, Arwen, North you're you're saying there's two south poles. We'll never find out if I can't finish a sentence, but, you know. Okay, go ahead. Just saying, you can't prove that north is a point and that south surrounds us. Right. Nothing points south. You point north. Yeah, but that's just an absolute point. vertical. I'm telling you, it's telling you the shape because they're Rotal. because Rotal. they're no, it isn't. Because, no, it's not. Well, Rotal. if it's a globe, you, they have you, to diverge. 
there has to be a divergence no. in the plan. On the big one, why? Theory, Based on what? On, on the, the reification theory. of these celestial bodies being all in a unified position like an object. Plumb bob. Divergent. Have to have to scale. Well, look, you're saying if it's a globe, plumb bobs have to diverge, which is vertical, dependent upon horizontal, which requires a flat earth. No, 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 no. hold on, yeah. John. No, hold on, John. Another thing. One, each are standalone. They don't require the other. This whole uh, talk about they do. Uh, uh, one, one creates the other. Requires matter. horizontal. No, no, it all does. Yeah, are yeah, all it they don't require the one. Creates the other instantly. One instantly creates That's the true. other. They will always be perpendicular one hundred percent of the time. That's correct, and parallel, the horizontals and the vertical. Anywhere. So you anywhere, can't invoke anywhere. vertical without horizontal. You can't invoke horizontal without uh, vertical. No, you can drop you, plumb, you can drop plumb bobs all day long, and they'll all be parallel. That's all. They're standalone. Just the coincidence <laughs> oh that the horizontals are perpendicular to that. Every glass of water is going to be perpendicular to every hanging plumb bob right now. Right now, this very define separate. vertical. Define vertical. Plumb. Plumb. Absolute plumb, zero degrees plumb. You oh, know it. Degree, the the, the zero between your ears, no degrees. Everything. You're gonna need a flat Earth for that. You right. are gonna need a flat zero Earth degrees. for that. That's right. Zero. But degrees. you don't. It doesn't yeah. require. It doesn't so require the only water. Way you can the, the, God damn it! The only way you can define away. vertical is the Earth is flat. Like, why? Why do you have to That's even? Right. Have divergent. What are you talking about? Divergent vertical. It, that's right. What? That's right. Let's go. That's right. You're on it right now. That's right. Keep going. That's it. Yeah, but going. what you were stating earlier yeah. about the pyramid right. wasn't going to prove it. Roller, that's the point. The point what is, the, what you were stating earlier about the pyramid problem. wasn't going to prove the point. Too small. The scale is too small. All verticals are parallel. <laughs> It's not what you know, it's what you can yeah, prove. Vertical. 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 And, there's absolute, and there's 100% absolute vertical, meaning straight up and conversely straight down. Every plum is that. Every plum is an absolute vertical. This is known before any structures like pyramids, before any navigation, that ship that they built used a plumb bob. And a water level, like a glass of water, spirit level. Okay, before that ship was built to go out navigating, this was known. Okay, I mean, these are the fundamental and, and north. Okay, now we we see the stars very helpful to guide us in parallel zenith over the land masses. Parallel is what we know. I mean, straight up verticals is was known. Great horizontals were known, and due north is known before any of this stuff starts happening, right? And the fact that every one of them is parallel, there is no divergency. What is the Earth telling you? If it's a sphere, they must absolutely diverge. There must absolutely be a formula to the divergency. And they say there is never to be seen, never to be observed, never to be witnessed. In fact, the only thing ever witnessed is absolute parallel ver verticals and horizontal every single time. Never, never been seen otherwise, ever. Well, so architecture Earth's can work you, on that. vertical and horizontal and north is all is is my grand point here and. Other side point, vertical and horizontal are standalone. Coincidentally, yes, they are absolute perpendicular every time. But each are standalone. They don't require the other, just to say. That's wrong. You said it in your definition of vertical, zero degrees. <laughs> it doesn't require horizontal to be vertical. When you drop a weighted line, it's telling you a vertical. That doesn't require you to hold you up a horizontal. Vertical is zero degrees. And you define vertical as zero degrees, correct? Vertical, you don't you don't create it, you discover it with the weighted line. 
the weighted line until right? you put a vertical. Why don't you just say yes or no? What's the problem? Is it zero degrees yes or, or no? To vertical. Yeah. All it's 360 around it. When you walk around that weighted line, it, there's no rake to it. There's no angle. It's telling you how to build. And if you go against that, you can, but you're going to be, you're going to be crooked. You're not going to be plumb. That weighted line, when you walk around at 360, there's no variation. Straight up and down. But the argument Vertical. is scale, uh, Roto. The argument is scale. That's the problem where, that's the, di that's the thing. You can claim water levels create a horizontal all day long. And even though we know they do, it can be argued that horizontal is only an apparent horizontal from your local position. It's the scale well, it can that be you need to that. change. It, it, it can be argued that, Brian, but here's the deal. They'll never see it otherwise. And until they can say, That's yeah, they here, it local. we yeah, know, we know they know. diverge. Well, they can't prove it either, can they? And in local, yeah, yeah I can prove it to be absolute vertical, absolute parallel one to another absolute horizontal and parallel one to another and yeah, perpendicular and they can call, they vertical can say they have, horizontal yeah. all locally for miles. Miles and miles, I can prove that. Yes. Miles and miles. Uh, yeah, but miles and miles is not enough. Uh, miles and miles is not enough. And when you say you can't prove it, well, you, you, know, you can't really prove it over miles and miles because you are proving it over miles and miles. You, just a few miles, Did you, you need a much bigger area. That's why, Did that's you, why, hang on, that's why right, I focus so much on the celestial navigation dip correction, because that requires the water at the horizon in the distance to be horizontal with the water underneath your boat. Consequently, yes. whatever, whatever, hang on, whatever horizontal is created from that correction, you're either going to be making a line that's going to be parallel, a horizontal line that can be span hundreds and thousands of miles, that's either going to be parallel mm -hmm. with sea level with the water, mm -hmm. A horizontal sea level, or you're going to be using horizontal mm -hmm. sea level as, a, as is in the almanac. That's the point. So if yes. you want to prove that, as in prove it within an argument, that proves it. Airplanes, so how they fly, prove it. You won't prove it with water levels. You won't prove that point with water levels, because as a baller, I could be a baller and I could argue against that, argue against that good enough to uh, convince audience members. Mm hmm I know, it's it's funny, water levels. you know, because it, what it really comes sphere, down to is that on a sphere, you never get zero degrees. You have to have a flat plane for this zero you're talking about, or 90, or 180. That's only hey, possible Brian. on a flat plane. Why or would you Brian. need to argue past the point? If you let them have divergent right. verticals on a... Yeah, that's but that's right. not the point. The and point hey, is what they're going to say. We're talking about, we're talking about what John. we know. Sorry, what's hey, John, about? what they do no, is what they about... say when they, when they put that on the sphere. What, Roto, one moment. I want to reply to yeah. John. We're not talking about what we know, John. We're talking about what we can prove. We know that uh, verticals don't, don't diverge. I know that a vertical is impossible on a globe because horizontal is impossible because it has no reference point. I understand that you can make 50,000 tangent planes and all, they'll all be different degrees to each other. But what, what is that degree or pitch taken from? Horizontal. So which one of them is horizontal? Mm. They'll, they'll just keep on claiming every tangent is a horizontal. Yet every tangent would be at a different, would be at a different degree mm. of pitch to another mm. a, 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 a tangent. It's complete nonsense. But the point is, it's the yeah. proving. It's not what we know. It's the proving to people. That's the difference. Brian and John. Yeah. And see, the trick, the trick that, they, that they try to do is just use one, like, plumb point. But when, they, when you start referencing one to another, is they won't do that. They don't go there. They try to say, you're going to get a perpendicular from one drop of a plumb bob and one spirit level reading. But they definitely try to avoid, well, what about two plumb bobs in reference to one another? They don't like to go there. Then they have to start invoking the one, formulas of the emergency that they can't prove. Come See, on. So you get them on the, you start adding more than one point. There, there is no zero on a globe. There, it is Correct. constantly 
changing. So it's not zero. So you never get especially you never get a perpendicular. Please stop interrupting each other halfway and end on top of that i really like what all of you have to say but just try to make it a little bit more concise because it's just taking an endless amount of time this way okay well what i'm saying is there is no zero on a globe it's an ever-changing slope so that you don't get a zero but for vertical you need a flat plane or horizontal, you need a flat plane. Well, now, uh, this would be interesting. On a sphere, first of all, if there were any kind of indication of one plumb measurement, it must necessarily point to the exact center of the sphere. And especially when you start invoking one plumb measurement to another, you will get the divergency, but either they're pointing to the exact center or even their divergency formula is chaotic. When, in which case, what's the point of even using the tool? What's the point? So, no. even so, what they're going to run into is inconsistency uh, when you start dropping more than one plum over another. But all this is fallacy because it's not even need. This is going into the what is not. The what is, and I'll say this about Brian saying about proving. You know, you're not going to prove it with certain. It's about a reasonable man with sensibility and the listener, you know, you, you put forth the information on the table and people are going to disseminate it as they will, you know, and, and I understand it can be confusing enough and understanding is, is kind of unfolded to the individual. And a lot of times it's hard to convey, just like Arwen's trying to say we're talking over each other. Those little things can interfere, those little nuances. And sometimes it's good to have like these presentations. Arwen, can you stop talking through It's taking forever. (laughs) Shut up, Nathan. Well, this show is good because of the presentation. But seriously, just, 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 just let him get to the end of it. Go ahead, Roto. Sorry, John. Sorry, Arwen. Well, I just, I just, I just gonna throw out a little compliment on the show because some of the presentations, it's kind of, um, I think people pick up on information like Lumpy was saying. He learns here, but the presentations and stuff is kind of a um, uh, monologue, and you're not talking to another person. It's just here's your info and do with it what you will. And it's good for a listener because it doesn't get tied up in arguments and things like that. You can just assimilate assimilate the information as you will. So, I mean, a lot of these kind of concepts like parallel plumb bobs, we can only, and north and things like this, I mean, we can only put the information out there. And we're all trying to kind of muddle through certain things. It's really coming along, I will say. In just a few short years, things are really getting into more of a singularity as it should. Uh, it seems like more of a true knowledge is surfacing, getting into the maps. This was a tangled mess just a couple years ago with the anti-flat earthers and whatnot trolls coming in talking about flat earth maps. And it, it really has some of this has gotten to extremes and silly points, but it's really coming back into focus now. Uh, I think any um, average listener that comes in here can understand more about uh, a sextant, the kind of the celestial navigation aspect, the aspects of uh, elevation angles, sea level. I mean, how many people in their daily lives think about something like sea level and what it means? So they come here and it's kind of like shining a light on some very fundamentals. And I think that's kind of refreshing because there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of this uh, discord style, these channels. I mean, if I'm kind of new to some of these channels, but just listening to a few of them, it's it's a mess. It, it's an argument uh, pit and unsavory, but proof, you know, a little more subtle. Um, I know there's some head bumping, whatnot. I get that around here, but nevertheless, it's on a good, smooth topic today. Some good topics with the with the maps and. Stuff.
Okay, let me get back to this. When you give them vertical on a sphere, you went one step past. There is no vertical on a sphere. There is no horizontal on a sphere. Such concepts would not exist. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, don't get me wrong. I totally agree. That's true. But I'm talking about from an argument point of view. What they're going to try and convey to an audience will be that every horizontal and every vertical is only a local phenomenon. And that's, that's the thing that must, that, even though we know that's nonsense, and we know they can't have those two things on a sphere, the point is they are, will be able to make a claim to the average person who won't really be putting a whole lot of thought into it. We'll just go, you know, that makes a bit of sense when it makes absolutely no sense, right? But the point is, is that we have to prove that all these horizontals are all parallel to each other. All these verticals are all parallel to each other. Well, like it's what we, we know can. and what we're we, able to we prove can. to an audience. Hang on, Roto. What we know and what we're able to prove to an audience are two different things. That's my point. It's true. It's not they're, they're axiomatic. The fact they exist at all proves themselves. True. Well, but let me give you an example. Though, One second, it? Roto, please. One second, Roto, please. One moment. Let me give you an example. The black swan, the horizon is at a distance that can't be matched with globe geometry. Right? They claim refraction. Right? Refraction destroys our argument because the claim of refracted horizon completely ends. Not only does it, it's like a double whammy, because not only is the horizon being too far away for them to kill their, their geometry, but when they're claiming refracted horizon, it kills their geometry doubly. Right? Yeah. It absolutely ends uh, we it. Need right? Paradox. right? We know that. We understand that. Look at how many people out there don't get that. Simple, simple thing. Right. They just don't get it. So, unfortunately, see, horizontal and pretty... vertical can be convoluted as well. Whether, I'm not saying it should be, but it can be. Well, just for certainty, in their geometry, sea level is a horizontal plane. See, you always keep it so simple. Sorry. Go ahead, Owen. I was just side commentary. You go. What? Mine also, but to Brian's point about proof, I don't think we need to hit a home run on proof. Uh, just like the black swan, a sensible man can say, well, what are we seeing with those rigs? Well, it's right in front of you. You're seeing a direct line of sight. Okay, that makes sense. Others would say, no, what you're seeing is not really there. It's displaced. What you, what, where it actually is, is over the hill. But because you see it in your direct line of sight, this trickery is happening. Now, a sensible man can take both, both of those. And either it makes more sense to a sensible man that, wait a minute, what I'm seeing when I zoom in is right in front of me. Or there's trickery to my eye. And we see this kind of thing over and over every time you zoom in. It's right there. Every time? Yeah. Every time. You zoom in and it's right there. So the aperture of the eye widens and you see further. A zoom. So, you know, is it right in front of you or not? Where's the rig? Yeah, but that's not, so, that's I mean, not to do with the horizon. Well, that's proof, not all everything you, for the horizon. You guys don't need a proof. It's just your sensible men. Your sensible men. And because this, this contrary man is never going to stop. It's never, ever, it's infinite. These jokers right. that are going to come in and talk about refraction and stupid, silly stuff, illusions, it all has to be illusions. And when you start no, seeing you're the, the pattern. Point, that, when they say that, when they say that, that's the end of the geometry. When they say it's refracted, <laughs> that means there is no globe geometry. That's the point everyone is missing. No, the, you're latching on you're to it and argue about it or thinking about it or talk about it. There's nothing to think or talk about. When they say refraction, that's the end of the geometry. They don't have a geometry to base the refraction they're claiming on. It's yes. nonsense. There is none. They don't and have I a geometry. Think, I think but most people are 
then we argue about whether or not it's refraction. I think that what that's not nobody's catching on we are catching on and people out there that listen to flat earth debates i mean we've discussed that specific right about the refraction negating the entire geometry for a while now so it is a complicated thing but hey repetition makes really complicated things a lot more simple to assimilate to those that aren't super talented right with their mm-hmm. intellect but they're still curious just takes repetition. So I think it is kind of how people do get it. A lot of people do. Sorry, that was my point. There's a, there's a rock in my hand. What is this rock? You say the rock is the rock. Correct. What is not this rock? Everything else. That's a lot of stuff that's not this rock. So vertical. It's a true thing. It's an absolute. What is not vertical? Everything else. What is not horizontal? Everything else. We know this in such ways, vertical and horizontal, because the earth tells us so. Forces, natures, a weighted line, and resting water. Those are the things that we orient all building and navigation on. So, I mean, what the globe is not going to be able to show us is the aberration of those rocks they're going to claim it's not that oh is that right but you'll never see it you just have to believe it just like the refraction it looks a certain way well all these plums actually look uh, uh, fairly no. well. mm. measurements say that too but they'll say no that's not the way it is you'll never see it the way we say it the but you just have to believe it. And once you start getting those plot points put together and sewn together like a quilt, that every single claim that they make has some sort of, you'll never see it though, thing to it, you know? Uh, but you're just going to have to believe it. it. becomes more farcical when they say, back it up and say it's science. Well, where, how do you even uh, get a yeah, science well, off, out of this off, if you're off, not off, even off, observing off the track it? There now, Roto. Yeah, you're bringing, up several points. you're bringing up 50 points at the same time. Just keep it simple. When oh. it comes to the black swan, when they say refraction, that's the end of that. They've killed their own model. It's over. They've killed their own geometry. True. They're showing they don't have True. any geometry. That's the end of it. Yeah, we tunnel you know, under the whether or not it is refraction. As soon as they claim that, it's over. Yeah. I've never had to pass that point. No. Just support. Our, I'm trying to support you, Brian. Your argument. Yeah, is but, uh, you're not, there's no one trying to support me in the middle of what I'm saying. I know. I'm sorry. It's just I'm That's trying right, to Brian. continue the metaphors a bit. And the thing about it, Brian, is you're right. It's so <clears throat> it's over right there. But what you'll find there's more. It, and it is like a quilt like of, the, of, of things just like that things just like that, you'll see how massive it is, widespread. The what? It's over well, argument I, I right there on that one point, you're right. I do it's see over on every other. I, I, I do see it. I know. See, this is my point. The water level does create a horizontal plane of reference. I have no doubt about that. But proving it over a big distance is the tricky part. Because well, the thing that we'll never see that they want to claim is happening. You've got to, well, unfortunately, we're not dealing with people who are living in reality. We're dealing with people who have a, who have a, who have a mutated view of reality. So consequently, we've got to prove over a big distance that all of these, uh, all of these water levels are creating the same horizontal. Mm-hmm. You've got to prove that. And a water level on its own in a way, is kind of a beg in the question uh, machine, because uh, beg in the question device, because you, even though you know it's creating a horizontal, you've got to kind of beg the question that it is. But that's still arguing past the point, because vertical and horizontal don't exist on a sphere. Correct. I'm in the middle of the ocean on a boat. I have two glasses. I take a scoop of ocean water in each glass. I hold each glass up, one higher than the other in distance to part. They're at rest. I'm still on the ocean. 
those two lines are parallel and horizontal. And if the ocean were at rest as well, it would be as well parallel to that. This is what is known. Every level of horizontal is parallel. Yeah. Yeah. But it has to be a flat earth first to get vertical right. or horizontal. Yes, so Yes, sir, it does. Yes, sir. What does it matter? It absolutely what does it matter is. if they claim that they're not parallel? <laughs> like, okay, well, what you think flat earth is out of phase with flat earth? You're still a flat earther. Why are you talking about a globe? <laughs> And sensible men will decipher the difference. And what you, you're going to start getting more sensible men around. And women. Mankind. This is now live streamed under stress with various different games running for about an hour and a half without issue. You think it'll work this way then? It uses a fair bit more power because I'm obviously initiating another piece of hardware, the iGPU. So instead of using 100 watts, it's using about 140. But other than that, I mean, that means it gets a little bit hotter. But uh, yeah, I, th I think this is the way forward. Good deal. Glad to hear it, Nathan. Glad it's happening again. Although, 14 months ago when I first got the PC, I thought this was the way forward. I tried it with two different decoders and ended up scrapping it for whatever reason. Or did I? I think I just tried to get it to work on one and it never would. Anyway, in any event, this is how I'm going to run it till it fails. Has anybody ever tried really stressing the fact that first oil platform in the black swan image, the closer one is still a black swan? I haven't really heard that too much. I hear, I've heard it, because, and it obviously would be, but it is. But I don't. Maybe, uh, maybe point that out sometime when discussing it. Because it would be six miles, six plus miles or whatever. It is. Go beyond 1.2, right? This is going to be the sensible moment to round out the show for you guys. Is that the, the conclusion of all of our conversations? And it seems to be. Yes, Thanks, Nathan. Everyone. We're all done chatting here. We're all pooped out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's such a shame. Pretty flat. Indeedy. Right, okay, well, I will. I'll round out on that note. So with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in live as a member. And, of course, if you're watching after the fact, all of you liked, commented, shared, subscribed, joined as a member, and all that good stuff. Of course, another massive thank you to today's Discord and Cheapest Panels for making this members-only live stream possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. Day. What a lovely day!